Hey guys, welcome to 2018. I'm Ryan Stroud for PC Perspective. Today we're gonna to talk about a brand new graphics card or a relatively new graphics card, but new to us, the Asus Republic of Gamers Strix GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. This is the, the flagship brand from Asus. Now they used to have the Matrix brand and the, and the Strix. They've kind of merged them and kind of combined some of the feature set. This is now essentially the highest end graphics card you can get from, from Asus. Uh, it is a 1080 Ti. This, they sold in two editions actually, a standard and an OC. There's very little difference between them. Effectively, the physical layout is the same. The cooler is the same. There's just a slight clock speed differentiation. Um, you can tell by just looking at this beast of a card that it is, in fact, that, a beast of a card. Uh, it is significantly larger than the Founders Edition slash reference design. It has a completely new, uh, unique PCB integration. The cooler is uh, like six heat pipes wide. It's two and a half slots or so, uh, significantly taller as well. Um, so keep that in mind as you are looking at what cases you're going to fit in. If you have a home, like a, like a small form factor home theater PC, small form factor device, mini ITX designs, uh, make sure you're looking at the measurements for these cards because this will uh, bump up into some of those problems. If we just look at the physical layout, um, a couple of things that stand out. One, it does have two 8-pin power connectors on it that are uh, inverted in terms of how they connect. It actually makes them easier to install and remove later on. A triple fan design uh, with uh, that has zero dB fan technology, basically meaning when the GPU is running under 55 degrees Celsius, the fans don't even spin. That's the advantage of having the beefy heatsink. You have three, no, actually you have two full-size DisplayPort connections, two HDMI connections, and a DVI connection. The two HDMI connections are nice. That allows you to have a VR headset attached and an HDMI display uh, without having to worry about buying adapters or something like that. However, if you wanted to use three DisplayPort monitors, that's going to be a problem for you with this particular card. Uh, you still have your two SLI connectors. Do support the high bandwidth controllers that way. Um, in terms of performance, let's talk about what this actually equates to. In terms of just clock speed out of the box, um, a reference design has a boost clock of 1,582 megahertz. A reference, Founders Edition, whatever you want to call it, GTX 1080 Ti. The standard edition of the Strix 1080 Ti has a boost clock 100 megahertz higher, 1683. And then the OC edition is another 25 megahertz above that at 1708. Also in the OC edition, you're running the memory at 100 megahertz faster. So 11,100 megahertz as opposed to 11,000 megahertz more or less in that regard. Uh, Asus, like I said, they've kind of merged the, the Strix and the Matrix lines. You get all kinds of cool uh, features in this regard. Like the, the heat sink is probably obviously um, the most important here, this allows you to run uh, very low temperatures, very quiet. The PCB design is unique. It has what they call super alloy two uh, uh, capacitors. Uh, it has a 10 plus two power phase design. I would consider it over-engineered for the clock speed differences that they ship out of the box, uh, but this is kind of what, what overclockers really dream about. Now, there was a controversy in the last month or so about the PCB for this, for this card in that they changed it slightly. Uh, this came about when people realized that the water blocks that they were ordering uh, for this card no longer fit. Uh, my conversations with Asus basically said that they made the change um, thinking that it would be something that would improve the card. They've actually already reverted back to the original design and production and something on the order of maybe a couple to few hundred cards actually came out with that different PCB design, but that there were no performance in, uh, changes with it, pro or con really. Uh, and so that was just kind of something that is in the normal course of production of, uh, of a product like this. Um, it does have a 2x8 power connection, which we did talk about. Uh, it has RGB LEDs on it, of course, because everything does, but it also has really cool stuff, like it has an RGB header on here. So if you want to hook an RGB strip up inside your case, you can actually do that through this graphics card, control it through that software, and you don't have to have a motherboard already that supports that technology. It also has Fan Connect 2, right? So it has two four-pin fan connectors. So uh, if you have chassis fans that you want to control through this software, uh, based on the temperature of this graphics card, card, for example, you can do that, right? The fans that maybe are on the front of your case that are feeding air directly into the graphics card, that kind of would make sense as well. I do think it's interesting that this has a DVI output. Most 1080 Ti's do not have a DVI output, so that's worth noting. Um, in our actual testing, the 
noise reduction of this cooler integration was significant. This is by far the, the quietest high performance graphics cards we've tested, quieter than the EVGA ICX, and more than five dBA less than the reference design of the 1080 Ti. That's a significant reduction. 5 dBA is almost having the sound level under a full load. At idle, everything's kind of about the same, uh, but under a full load, that's a significant, significant delta. And they have the zero dB technology that I mentioned before. If you're running, uh, you know, League of Legends or Dota 2 or something, you're playing one of those types of games that maybe doesn't stress the GPU and maybe you have a frame rate limiter on of some kind. If you keep the GPU under 55C, the fans actually never turn on, making it a silent if you will, graphics card. When we look at performance in the real world, um, you're looking anything from two up to 7% faster than the reference card for this particular design. It just depends on how uh, sensitive that game or application is to the clock speed variances that this card can provide. Out of the box stock, this ran at a sustained clock speed where you know we we're running Unigen Heaven, looping it for a significant portion of time to get a stable clock rate of about 1,881 megahertz. So actually, you know, uh, more than 150 megahertz higher than the rated boost clock of the card even. Uh, so that's a significant improvement over the competition there. Uh, and just by doing our basic overclocking, you know, turning the power uh, target slider all the way up, I think we did a, we were able to get a plus 70 megahertz offset in our overclock uh, stable. And we were able to run at 200, or I'm sorry, 2024 megahertz stable clock on this card in heaven. Uh, obviously, it's going to vary based on your application and the, and the game and the environment in which the card is in. But that's impressive to be able to run over 2 gigahertz on this card without any kind of volt modding or, or extreme temperature changes or anything like that, right? Just stock running with, or not stock, overclocked a little bit, but the easy way in software that we're used to doing with our, with our GeForce cards. It does come at the expense of some extra power consumption. In general, this card will pull about 30 watts more than a reference Founders Edition 1080 Ti, so you're looking in the 280 watt range because of that. You know, Asus knew that, took into account, that's why you have the two 8-pin connectors as opposed to an 8 and a 6. Uh, <clears throat> when you overclock, that's gonna go, obviously, higher than that, up to the 300 watts and above. Note that even at 280 watts out of the box, that is less than the power consumption of uh, Radeon Vega 64 at stock settings, right? Which is more comparable in performance to a GTX 1080 as opposed to a 1080 Ti. Um, the final thing worth mentioning is obviously price. There are still a lot of cryptocurrency mining going on. There's still a lot of availability concerns. The MSRP of this card is $780, which is a lot of money, don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a high-end graphics card. It's got a, a price premium on it, but it's not that much of a premium, uh, I believe, over what the reference designs and kind of standard stock blowers sell for currently. Um, however, the pricing as of when we wrote the review was closer to 810 and the pricing as we record this video portion of the review is now near $900, right? So at 900 bucks, I think that's a little bit too much to, to, to bite off, to swallow for a gaming card. Um, especially knowing that you can get a Titan XP, you know, whatever for a little bit more than that. Although this is probably gonna perform as fast or maybe a little bit better than it. Um, I would keep an eye on this, wait for those prices to come back down to that $800 range. And then for those extreme enthusiast gamers, the guys that want the best of the best, you care about noise, you care about temperature, you care about um, your overclockability and headroom on that regard. Uh, I don't see anything that's really besting what ASUS has done with the ROG Strix GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. We have the full review up on PCPro.com right now, so be sure to check that out if you want more information and benchmarks and graphs and what have you. Uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks.